this time i'd like to call the meeting of the dysart unified school district back to order let the record reflect all members are present and we'll continue with um item h3 madam president i just want to acknowledge um, for the record the list of people who did sign in to speak um, those people are encouraged to email the board if they would like to um, further express their concerns regarding the agenda item. The people that signed in to speak this evening um, is our Sharice Booth, Dale Deal, Kimberly Hyde, Michelle Dillard, Angelina Russo, Steve Daniels, Colby Borges, Marin Wins. Wins. Autumn Trumbly and Nathan Trumbly. Thank you. Madam President, uh, just uh, giving some more background on this, uh, the last uh, regular scheduled board meeting during the administration update on, on COVID, it was the recommendation of the district that we continue with the current protocols throughout the rest of the year. Um, since then, the governor made an announcement that um, essentially removed any requirements for uh, the wearing of masks in public, which um, brought the mask issue to the front center of, of attention. And since the governor's announcement, this has a, been a, a very um, emotional and very strongly debated topic um, in our community, but also in our school district. And for this reason, um, it is specifically brought to the governing board for, uh, for conversation. Um, just to give some, some basic information, at this point, our active cases are very low. Um, we are hovering at about five um, students total throughout the 23,000 students. Um, we have about one or two at any given time of adults, employees who are reporting active cases. Um, we are continuing to implement the protocols with, um, with contact tracing and quarantine as necessary. Although, as I mentioned, it's very low. It is, uh, the community, once again, has seen uh, higher numbers that are not reflected in the, in the Dysart community. Um, I, I believe that many of these uh, low numbers are a direct result of the safety protocols. Um, that being said, I understand that conditions have changed at this point with regard to the number of people who have been vaccinated and the recent um, information released by the CDC about being able to be outside and if you're vaccinated and even in, gather in small groups inside if you're vaccinated. Um, so there are, it's still, as it has been for the last 12 months, it's a moving target. As new information is released, as the health experts uh, continue to weigh in on the various topics. All throughout this year, administration has um, received lots of opinion and input about the protocols and the, the decisions that have been made. And while it would be tempting to look at a popular vote and go that direction, uh, we have been consistently following the direction of the health professionals. The health professionals said the safest place for kids is to be in the classroom, and we did that. The health professionals said um, here are very specific guidelines for contact tracing uh, for quarantines. We have followed that. These have not been popular decisions for, in every case, somebody. And the board at this time has the monumental task of weighing in on the same um, conversation and if the board so chooses there's a recommended motion with two options and that is to either 
uh, continue the, the mask requirements or continue current protocols in place until the end of the school year, which is May 20th, or um, to discontinue the mask requirement beginning tomorrow. The board has a liberty, these are recommended motions. The board can have discussion and come up with a different motion that is some variation of, of those. So with that, I'll turn it over back to the president to facilitate the conversation. A couple questions. Um, I know we talked about this briefly, but can you give us an update as far as the air quality um, filtration systems that we used our COVID money for um, that, to put back into our schools to improve the health of our students and staff? Can you give us an update of where we're at on that? Yes. So um, the board approved the use of federal COVID relief funds, ESSER monies is what we refer to them as. And that, a, a portion of that money was specifically dedicated to what we call air scrubbers. Right. Air scrubbers are you put a, a mechanism in every single room where there's a vent or an air intake. And these air scrubbers um, basically ionize the particles, make them very dense, and they are captured in our in our filtration system, our current filtration system. To do a single campus takes about one to two weeks. Um, we have already started that, um, the installation of those. Um, but with 25 sites, yeah. um, it will take 25 weeks, which is about six months. Okay. But yes, that is underway. And with the um, short time left before the end of the school year, we are hoping that we can have more access to the schools during the summer. Mm -hmm. There will be some summer school, but that's not filling the building. So we're hoping that the contractors can get in during the summer and expedite the installation process before school starts in the fall. Okay. because there's everybody saying science on this side, there's everybody saying science on this side. So what I was finding is, as I was looking into these articles, and this is not CNN, it's not MSNBC, it's not Fox News, it's not Newsmax or whatever. This was like studies done back in 2014 and 2015 over in Asia, okay? Because they've been dealing with the mask mandate for so long. And what these studies are finding is, you know, and this was like right after SARS, is it's finding that cloth masks are only like 90, they have a, what was it, a 90% penetration rate. Cloth masks and handkerchiefs. Medical masks have a 50% penetration rate. So, um, you know, just different quotes, you know, this one, these, this one article I was reading, you know, it says, we know that wearing a mask outside healthcare facilities offers little, if any, protection from infection. You know, and then there's these, these, all these other studies, and it says, what is less clear is whether a mask offers any further protection in healthcare settings in which the wearer has no direct interactions with symptomatic patients. You know, and it talked about, there's a quote here from yet another study. So said a mask alone will not prevent healthcare healthcare workers with early COVID-19 from contaminating their hands and spreading virus to patients and colleagues. So it's talking about all these different variables, and one of them even mentioned kids. Um, kids wearing masks, a lot of times the masks don't fit them, and so it really doesn't do anything for them anyway. You know, and not only that, but they've got these holes on the side, you know, and so stuff still gets through fiddle still gets through with these kids. And they're constantly touching things, like they're touching their face more. You know, and working as an instructional coach, I've been in the kindergarten classroom for the past month, and I'm telling you, like, they have a mask mandate at their school, but these kinders, all the way down, all the way down, these kinders, and it's not because they're just trying to be defiant, but they're just kids. You know, and their teacher will 
try to remind them to pull up your mask, pull up your mask, put on your mask, but their day is just nonstop. And so what's happening is these kids are taking it off, putting it in their desk, or they're pulling it down to their chin, and then they're dropping crayons on the floor, picking crayons up, putting it on, messing with their mask, taking their pencils, dropping it on the floor, picking it up. Oh, hey, I want to borrow your crayon. And then messing with their mask. And not only that, but it's, let's see, surgical masks were also found to be a repository of bacterial contamination. So, and it says that various respiratory pathogens were found on the outer surface of used medical masks, which could result in self-contamination. The risk was found to be higher with longer duration of mask use. So what these guys are saying, and these really aren't opinionated articles, is, you know, these was 24 and 2015. So this was like way before COVID even started. And I don't know if you guys are familiar with reading journals and articles and scholarly research and all that, but when you're doing a research, you typically just publish the results. You typically publish the results. You start off with the research and you say, this is my question. And then what you do is you do all the data, you collect the data, and then you publish the results. You don't say, well, I think it's good or I think it's not good. You just say, and then one, one article said, penetration of cloth masks by particles was almost 97%, 97% and medical masks 44%. So moisture retention, reuse of cloth masks, and poor filtration could result in increased risk of, risk of infection, and the results caution against the use of cloth, cloth masks. You know, and it says masks have been demonstrated to have a degree of efficacy, have not been demonstrated to have a degree of efficacy that would warrant their compulsory application for the checking of epidemics. You know, and then one study suggests that Basically, the masks are a reflective action, a reflexive action to panic. So, you know, it kind of questions the using of masks for actual safety. Does it just make you feel safety? So it's suggesting that people are saying, just wear masks. Okay, so what these authors did, these doctors, they researched it, they took the controlled study, and these are the results. So, you know, and this, like I said, these are studies done back in 2014 and 2015 before COVID was even anywhere. So it's not biased, it's not opinionated. This is just studies, medical studies. So I, I honestly think it would be beneficial if we just removed the mandate and kept it optional because, you know, a lot of people are saying there's only three weeks of okay, but there's summer school, you know, and we're just going to keep going around this mountain again, you know, if we don't lift the mandate tonight, then it's going to come up for summer school. We want children wearing masks in summer school, and then again for next year. So I, I honestly think it would be beneficial if we lifted the mandate and let it be optional. That's my two cents, based on what I've seen from science. We also have choir concerts, band concerts, and plays coming up as well. And um, for, for those that have stood on the Vista stage like we did last week, it's pretty hot on that stage with those lights. Mm -hmm. So for me personally, I just, I think it needs to be optional. One of the things, and you were talking about the studies um, that were done some time ago, um, one of the things that I actually teach CPR and um, one of the things I go over with my students is the fact that when we breathe in oxygen we expel CO2 and that's the bad air so of course when the bad air is expelled where is it expelled into the mask and so you're breathing back in the bad air and then you're expelling more bad air so it's it's a consistent thing that's getting into your lungs um, uh, but on the other hand, I do see that it is only, was it, 16 days left of school. So do we provide that option for the parents? Do we um, still protect 
everybody as a whole, because we as a board, we're supposed to be flying at this 30,000 foot. And um, it's, um, it is difficult, you're, you're right, students will take the mask, they'll pull them off, they'll, oh, I forgot, and they'll put them back on. This has happened all year. And um, teachers have been frustrated, principals have definitely been frustrated. Um, I'm not sure what the happy medium is, but I, the one thing that keeps sticking in my brain, yes, there's only 16 days left, CO2 is bad. So it's, it's just like, should we provide that option for our parents? I want to see students walk across the stage for graduation. I want to see our students um, uh, go through their eighth grade promotion. Um, I don't want anybody else to get sick. They're great numbers as far as the, you said about five cases district wide. Um, uh, but that's for our students. So yeah, we basically have three different types. We have um, people that are against uh, keeping the mandate, uh, continuing the mandate, or providing that option. Um, but the question is, I don't know which one. Dropping the mandate, to though, still provides the option for anybody to wear a mask. True. Yeah. True, it does. Um, but I did have one question for you, Dr. Kellis. If we did drop the mandate or provide it as optional, would we still continue the other protocols, such as the cleaning, such as um, uh, the other protocols that we have in place right now? Would we still continue those? Madam President, Mr. yes. The intent is that we continue any protocols that the board doesn't actively remove off <coughs> the stage protocol plan. Can I ask um, some questions first before I kind of voice some of my concerns or opinions? Um, so, because I know Dr. Kalish, you're more involved with those intimate conversations with CDC, Arizona Department of Health. Um, for a while, it was seemed like every day, if not weekly. Is it is it still the understanding that despite the governor's recent act action, the CDC and the Arizona Department of Health are they have they changed their stance on the use of masks in schools? Madam yeah, President, Ms. Pritchard, they have said that um, if they are engaged in rigorous activity, that they should not be wearing masks. Um, so, based on that health professional uh, guidance, um, we have worked hard to allow students who are at recess and at lunchtime the ability to not wear masks, assuming that they are running and having rigorous exercise during lunch and, and recess. Um, since the governor's, and that was before the governor's um, announcement, since the governor's announcement, um, they still, they being the health experts, still say that wearing masks is one of many protocols. All by itself, it's not going to solve the problem but in conjunction with multiple protocols, collectively they are effective. But are they saying, have they said that they agree that mm -hmm. masks are no longer needed in schools? They have not said that. In fact, last night on the news, I, the CDC, they interviewed the CDC director and she said that they are still encouraging masks indoors. They want to continue, if you're outdoors, that's one thing that they're saying indoors to continue to wear a mask. And that was the CDC or the Department of Health? CDC. Okay. Um, in a sense, we could still do the same thing, right? We could still encourage masks, but not make it a requirement. Who's gonna monitor that? I mean, you send a child to school, and parent thinks that child has a mask, or the child has the mask in their pocket, and they put it on and they get to school. Then they take it off because kids are like, I don't wanna wear the mask. Then something happens, how are the, how are the, are we gonna have the teacher say, is this optional, are you supposed to have a mask or not have a mask? Uh, something happens, they get, the parent finds out, then they're gonna call and say, why didn't you make my child put his mask on? I, I mean, I just, I, the last few weeks of school, why do we wanna put that added pressure on our teachers and administrators? 
Um, if masks become optional, um, because I, I hear what Ms. Densmore is saying as far and Ms. Um, Chapin as far as um, having it be optional, people that want to wear it can, people that don't, don't have to. Um, it's kind of like a win-win, but I'm concerned about the fact that those who maybe either live in multi-generational families or have underlying health concerns, um, and maybe they don't feel comfortable being in a room with people who potentially may choose not to wear their mask. Um, and, and when this first came out to, the issue with mask was if I wear a mask, I'm protecting you. If you wear a mask, you're protecting me. So I could wear my mask, but if I'm next to somebody who doesn't want to wear one, then I'm really not getting that protection. I don't know if they changed that because I know it's an ever-evolving thing. But basically, what I'm, one of my questions is, um, is it truly fair all around if we are not going to allow the students to, if, who are uncomfortable being next to someone who is not wearing a mask, will we allow them to flip back to online learning because they do not feel safe in the school? Will they be given an option to keep themselves safe and, and flip back to online learning? Um, the plan right now is no. Um, that doesn't mean that a student can't self-quarantine. The board has had that conversation about self-quarantine. Um, that is typically for seven to ten days. We have 15 days left, and so it would be difficult. Um, I have heard from principals who have said that um, they have worked very hard to get kids back into school who have been online, <coughs> and they're concerned that they'll go back home. Obviously, we can't stop them from not coming to school. If they are absent, there are state laws regarding the 10-day the absence requirement that they must be dropped, but there are ways that people work with the attendance policies and regulations and, and maintain enrollment. But as far as this, the quarantine option, I, I think when we've had discussions about that in the past, you said it's really up to the teacher. If they want to provide that Zoom link, if you're not in a true quarantine situation. So let's say you're, you have been exposed to someone in your class, but let's just say the simple fact of risk is gonna go up some if you're around unmasked people in less than six feet of space. And if those people choose to not come to school because they feel unsafe, um, it wouldn't truly be a quarantine because they may not have been exposed yet. But again, with that 10 day drop rule, um, how would that come into play? Because they really wouldn't. And then they had a teacher who maybe was like, no, Zoom isn't, I don't offer Zoom, or you know, at this time of the year with all the other um, demands that are, that are on that teacher, it would just be too much for them to have to do online. That's really not, that's really not a guarantee, I guess, basically is what I'm asking. I'm sorry, let me see, open the door first. Um, so it would be, Easy, easy, is a funny word. <laughs> it would be easy to require all teachers to live stream their, their, their lessons every day. Uh, we can has purchased a live stream camera for every classroom for that very purpose. If we were to be shut down as a state again, we're ready to go live, live stream within five minutes. Um, yes, that can happen. Now, obviously the quality of that is not ideal, um, meaning we have seen by experience that when a teacher is teaching a class, they're not giving attention to the kids who are viewing the, the live stream. So they miss out on that direct instruction engagement. But yes, um, I, we have said anytime a parent requests that a teacher live stream, a student could break their arm, have nothing to do with COVID, but if they break their arm and they're at home, it's very easy to just flip on the, the live stream camera. Well, easy, I guess, is a funny word, but that can be done. And then if, if masks become optional, oops. If masks become optional, <coughs> if it's largely because we're saying that, you know, now we're down to just five cases for the entire district, then would administration be willing to lighten up on the quarantine policy specific to indirect conduct. So for an example, true exposure they say is 
anytime you're within six feet, or maybe now they changed to three feet, but either way, six, three to six feet of someone who has tested positive for COVID for more than 15 minutes unmasked. So if you're a student who, again, if the board votes to make masks optional and you choose to wear a mask and there is a student within three feet of you, six feet of you in your classroom who tests positive for COVID, are we going to still maintain those mass quarantine, mandatory quarantines, um, even for those students who maybe choose to wear their mask? Uh, and President Pritchard, that goes back to the question is, if, are we going to continue with the other protocols? And the plan would be to continue the protocols unless the board specifically removes protocols from the safety protocol plan. So that's an, op that's an option. The board wants to, so mm -hmm. opt. And finally, just as far as just my question piece, and then it, after everyone else is done, I'll talk about some of the things that have been kind of weighing on my mind regarding this um, decision. As far as administration, different uh, like principals, even district administration teachers, what are you hearing as far as their, um, their thoughts, their comfort levels within the last 15 days of school? Everything I've heard, you've heard as far as the written communication. Um, what is fascinating to me is what you have seen, the emails. Some teachers who you might kind of want to be tempted to group all teachers into one opinion that keep, keep the, the mandate in place. And that's not the case. There are teachers who have expressed desire via emails to the board and me that we lift the mandate and make it optional. Um, there are still a lot of teachers who want it the other way. You would think all parents would want to lift the mandate, and yet there's a lot of parents who don't. Um, we did have a meeting with our principals earlier this week, and the general census of the conversation was that um, there's 15 days left. Let's not disrupt so much when we're doing state testing this week. When we are doing final exams and students are trying to finish out the year with, with their end of year activities. Um, and if they are no math, some parents are going to pull their kids. There's a potential some teachers will, will stop, will just say I'm done. Um, some have said that is why I say there's a potential. Whether any of that happens, I don't know. Parents may say whether they're going to pull their children for one side or the other. Uh, they may not. Um, some some uh, teachers who have said, I'm out of here, may or may not. It's 15 days left. So to answer your question, it's all over the place. <laughs> how, would, how, would that, how would that, if they went optional and parents pulled their kids out, they can't do finals at home. So, and how they do, like they're doing testing right now, you can't do that at home. So they still have to come. I mean, we have to make other arrangements now for them to do it in a separate room, or, I mean, how would all that work with, because of all the things that are happening at the end of the school year? Madam President, uh, Ms. Grant, we're doing that right now with our online students who have to take the state test. Um, they're coming in. Um, the schools have set up a large room. It might be the media center or cafeteria or the gym, and they're spreading them all out. Um, I was just at Riverview today and observed the entire media center with students 12 feet apart. But they were all online kids that were required to come in to take the state test. Um, obviously, some tests can't be done remotely. If it's a performance-based test like um, ceramics or culinary arts, uh, I say never, never say never. It'd be difficult. But uh, in, in more likely than not, they'd be required to come in in a separate setting to take the test. But what about finals? I mean, when we're talking That's what I'm talking about. Well, I mean, like the high school kids. Right, exactly. They would have to be other arrangements. Now we're asking for another which is what we've done for the, the state test for high school students. But if they're not willing to bring their students in school, if they could be around people that aren't wearing masks. Uh, could 
should be a, an incomplete on their report card until they come in and do it. Well, we were also offering summer school kids. That's our like, graduating senior, so they have to finish their finals. Yeah. And to the point of summer school, the plan was to continue the profiles through the end of the year and then use summer school as the optional trigger point. Um, because summer school is optional, it's not required. Um, and then use that as the transition into the fall. What, how do we work with outside groups right now? Um, I know we have a few um, we have like religious organizations that use our facilities. Do we require those outside groups to enforce our mask mandate? Yes. Just like so the, uh, even so, after the governor's order was over, so did we have anything in between there to where the state mandate was dropped, but our mandate was still in place? Um, we have maintained our protocols for everyone consistently. Okay. That's it's kind of like the State Farm Stadium setting the requirements for us for graduation. We don't have a choice. Right. And they are requiring masks, correct? Um, so an example would be that just to show over the weekend, uh, just to, it's required to have masks. You know, those in the crowd will require to have masks mm -hmm. unless they were deep. Mm -hmm. okay. So here's, uh, here's some of my thoughts then, just to keep discussion going um, amongst the five of us that are all of us in here. Um, there are 15 instructional days left of school. Um, I'm particularly thinking about our high school seniors, our eighth grade promoters. Um, after May 9th, theoretically, if a student's exposed to COVID in a classroom, they'd be excluded from participating in their graduation ceremonies due to quarantine. Um, and then also during this time, as we've said, there's going to be um, our, our testing that's going on right now that could potentially be impacted. I think our numbers are low, and, and I think our numbers are low because, uh, and I know this is kind of goes on, everyone has their own opinion about masks. I do view that they are a mitigating factor. I think we have mitigating factors in place for a reason, and I think they've been effective. I think they've helped us get here. I don't think they're the be-all, end-all, but I think they've helped. Um, the difference is, uh, to one of the points of, you know, when does, when does it end as far as summer school, you know, we could continue to have this. I would recommend if the board decided to keep the band-aid in place through the end of the year, that we revisit summer school. Um, we specifically have a date to do that. The difference for me is that summer school, students are going into that scenario eyes wide open, knowing that, okay, the board either voted to keep the mandate in place or make it optional for summer school sessions. They have a choice, they either go or they don't. Right now, students are in their current situation based on the fact that DICEART put um, these mitigating factors in place, one of them being masks. Um, it's too late for some of them to go fully back into an iSchool setting. That's not even an option for them. So really, it's not a fair, I hate to say it's not fair, but it's not a fair balance for all because they're in a situation where they're de denied an opportunity to make the choice like they all were in the beginning of the semester of, you know, there was a clear end date of after this date you cannot flip back. So we're telling them you can't flip back, but now we're taking away a potential safety net that maybe was the make or break for them to decide whether or not they were going to stay in person or not. So to me, it's just the difference of, and even for our teachers and staff, I mean, they decided to continue teaching and Dysart or stay with us because of the mitigating factors we have in place. Now they still have to fulfill the terms of their contract and maybe doing so in a scenario where they're not feeling safe because they're going to be around others that aren't wearing their masks. So there's that piece. Um, the students, and then also that those under 16 can get vaccinated. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there, so again, I go back to the multi generational families, um, underlying health conditions. The very, very sad reality of if we remove masks right now, there's a potential for infection rates to go up. The, quarant the mandatory quarantining, that could start happening again. And the thought of some of these high school seniors or eighth graders who are getting ready to promote be told that we've already got another email from someone that they couldn't attend a Shadow Ridge um, choir event because they're quarantined. And, and so a lot of these things they could be missing out on when we could just 
stay true to what we have to put in place for the next 15 days, reconvene as a board, talk about summer, and at least at that point, people can make a, de a decision based on all the facts presented of, if you don't want to be around someone who might not be wearing a mask, then you don't enroll in summer school. Those are my thoughts. I, and I'm, I'm the first person to say, people should have the right to choose, don't impose your will on me. I get that, <clears throat> but it's to the point to where it doesn't negatively impact another. And by doing this, we are potentially impacting negatively the will of another or the safety of another, or at least their perceived safety. And I just think we have to look at beyond my feeling of how I feel about certain things, we have to look at everybody and everyone has different circumstances. So something that Miss Pritchard just said, um, revisiting it for summer school. Summer school starts what day again? June 6th or 7th, whichever that one is. We have other activities between the end of school year and the start yeah, of summer do. school yeah. in the yes, We do. That is and I want to make sure mm -hmm. that we keep that in perspective. Yes, correct. That is, that is I feel mm -hmm. like if we're going to make any decisions for summer school, then we should do it either tonight or really soon because there's so much going on. You know, and if teachers are afraid, you know, to go in the classroom without a mask, well, they all had the opportunity to be vaccinated. We had a pod, you know? So if, if teachers are vaccinated, then it really shouldn't be an issue for them being in the classroom with or without a mask. Well, not everybody, well, you're right. We, we offered it to them. But in talking to some people, they, they wanted to wait until the school year was over because they didn't want to get sick and have to miss school because they weren't sure about side effects because they heard of, you know, we've all heard of it after the first shot, this might happen, after the second shot, this might happen. And I've talked to several people that said, no, I'm not vaccinating until after school is out and then I'm gonna go get the shot and then, you know, whatever. The other thing is, is, is we have kids that are, haven't even been vaccinated. I mean, some of the seniors may be, but not all of them. And we, from the very, very beginning, when this whole thing started, I believe you have followed CDC guidelines and Maricopa County Health. I mean, we continued that whole thing. Um, it just, I, I, my biggest concern is the vaccine. And you're right, people had a choice to be vaccinated, but they're not. And we don't know who's been vaccinated. I mean, nobody's going around and checking. It's not. Have you been vaccinated? Have you, you know, it's, there's no record of who's been vaccinated or not. But again, the vaccination, the mask, the hand sanitizer, the washing of the hands, all of that goes together. It, none, none of it is the, the absolute answer. I mean, I've been vaccinated, but I still wear my mask because I don't want to get in there. I don't know if I'm gonna get COVID if I don't wear my mask. I mean, this is a very moving puzzle. Nobody knows all the answers, but it all, you have to put it all together. Oh, and to your point, Ms. Dinsmore, about the this and how hot it is up there, I have to say I'm very impressed with how creative they were on, rather than wearing masks, they were face shields. Um, that's a, that's a one of the plays. Anyway, they were wearing face, uh, the, 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 anyway, they were wearing, and I thought, how creative of them that not to have, because they were singing and moving around a lot, that they were wearing face shields. In fact, I couldn't even tell until I looked, and I thought, oh, look at that, they have face shields on the way they, they I mean, I'm very impressed with how creative everybody has been with this whole, this whole thing. I appreciate the creativity, too, but I don't know particularly with theater, but I know with some groups, it's booster parents, it's fundraising, it's parents, it's children mm -hmm. that are, you know, using their money from their, you know, their summer job to pay for these masks and these extra, you know, safety accessories. They're not all school provided. So I just, you know, I, I don't know for, for back with theater, but I know that for other groups they are. Palm was an example. They had to, you know, use a lot of their own funds for certain masks that were AIA required. Um, so, Dr. Kellis, can you remind us how many um, kinder 
we had a deficit in this year. I think it was like three or four hundred. Madam President, members of the board, I think between kinder and first grade, it was probably. Uh, Madam President, members of the board, um, this year at the beginning, probably down 700 kids. I believe probably 350, 400 were probably kindergarten, first grade. Okay. And do we have any feedback as to why? I mean, was it maybe because we were going to be requiring their, you know, five and six year old to wear a mask? Um, we don't have any formal feedback. We didn't do a survey of them. Anecdotally, we have heard that with everything going on, they're just going to redshirt a year mm -hmm. and they'll come back next year in hopefully. August, hopefully, when things have settled down. But we also have a charter school moving in that could absorb some of that. There are. Okay. Um, there are, again, mixed messages, some because of the mass, some because they um, don't feel safe. I mean, it's, some just don't want to deal with it yeah. with their, their littles. Um, Madam President, members of the board, I would say uh, NSBA, if you've seen the articles, this is a question nationwide. Everybody's asking the same question. So mm -hmm. technically, I believe school districts are down around 60 to 65,000 students and charters are up about 10,000. Um, but ultimately, there's kids that were here last year and are not here this year and there are no school system. We don't know about micro schools. You might have seen the article of the Attorney mm -hmm. General now mm -hmm. looking into that. There's a lot of homeschooling, micro schools, or just take off a year. That is why there's just so much unknown. Do they all show up? The 700 plus show up for the next year plus our growth? Uh, that's why we're taking a middle ground. But there's a lot of unknown and uncertainty. At, at one of the CIP meetings, I forget the school. I want to say Marley Park, but that may be wrong. They're trying touching their faces and breathing in their carbon dioxide, you know? And we all got the same emails flooding from parents saying, just let us choose, let us choose. And you know, there are people out there who develop breathing issues from wearing a prolonged mask, you know? And just the bacteria being on it all day, even if you just get a fresh one every day, I do, but just constant bacteria, 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 you know? And you also have to consider kids' immune system. Yeah, we're trying to keep them from getting COVID, but I mean, as children, when we eat dirt, that's where we get our immune system from. So if we're shutting down our immune systems now, are we doing long-term damage, you know? And honestly, you know, if, if I've got four or five studies that say the medical masks have 44 to 50% penetration rate and the cloth masks, I mean, 90% penetration rate, it doesn't matter if I'm wearing it and somebody else is not, whatever I'm spewing out is still getting out. It, but I, I honestly think it would be best just to lift the mandate and leave it optional, but so do my thoughts. So what would you say to those families? Uh, that's, that's my only thing. I mean, the, um, there's so many different studies out there and, and lots of people that emailed would link different studies and I looked at those and there's just an overwhelming amount of information and evidence mm -hmm. for whatever the study, you know, is geared to examining. And it's hard to like, okay, is this a credible group that did the study? Is this not? That's why I kind of always go back to what does the CDC say? What does the Department of Health say as kind of like my authority? And I, you know, I'm different too. I mean, since 99, I have been, one of my jobs has always been in the medical field. So I know that that's a hard thing to pull out of me. And I know not everybody buys into the medical, um, you know, evidence and things. But that, for me, I, I do, I do put some value into what the CDC and the Department of Health does. So although there's different studies out there that will kind of tell you mixed things, depending on which one you read, 
I just kind of go back to that that main authority. But aside aside from everyone's view on that, I guess my big thing is we do know it's a mitigating measure, and if we do take that away, which then as a result you know you're increasing <coughs> some risk, whether or not how much or not. Again, that goes back to what study you're reading. But if the risk is increased, and then you have these seniors who have had the year they've had with COVID and everything they've endured, and then that puts them at higher risk of being quarantined or sick, and they can't walk and finish their high school experience just for 15 days of lifting a mandate. I just feel like that is such a huge risk for for 15 days. And, and, and I just, I don't, that's where I'm really torn on that. I know this conversation would be totally different if this was the middle of the year. This would be totally different if um, the governor had lifted or did what he did on April uh, 19th. And um, we would be having a totally different conversation. And if it was the middle of the year, I would lean more towards uh, having it as an option. Um, but for right now, I just think that we need to continue, and this is my own thing, I think we need to continue uh, keeping the mask in place. It's, it's just a short time. So what do we say to those people that have been sick and tired of hearing the 15 days to slow the spread, mm -hmm. and we say, oh, only 15 days more after we've had, like, you know, how many, 400 days? Mm -hmm. um, and what do we say to those parents concerned that we're violating their parental rights? to have control over, you know, health care decisions for their child. Uh, whether or not they can, you know, they can wear a mask or the shield. Those, all those conversations, you know, happen in the beginning of the school year, you know, when we were coming back on campus. Um, and it seemed like they got different answers, you know, from whether it was from administration or their teacher or from the district office on what their rights were in that. Whether or not they could wear a shield or they didn't have to wear a mask. That wasn't very clear, and I, I just think that we need to make this exceptionally clear. Um, I, I, I just think that we need to have a process for parents to opt out if that's what we decide to do as a board tonight um, to keep this mandate on. I think that we need to allow a process for parents to opt out of this. Because right now, we're talking about vaccines and, well, we can't vaccinate our kids. Well, you know, there's a lot of parents that never, ever want to put a, a needle in their child and give them a vaccination. That's and true. who are we to take that right away from them? So for us to say that we, you know, have all this medical knowledge and we're going to honor what the CDC says, I thought that we were about local control, not a federal agency, you know, that's funded by federal tax dollars and the Bill Gates Foundation and Bloomberg, why are we listening to them? Why are we not listening to our governor? And, you know, and then making that decision on our own. As the ASBA says, we're all about local control. We're big girls and we can make this decision on our own. I don't understand that and that's where my frustration is. And I feel like we're violating parents' rights. Well, and what about all those parents? No, I, I my mentality is not okay not okay in any situation but what about mm -hmm. all those parents who showed up tonight trying to get in to speak trying to get in to let us know the community's wishes because ultimately we were elected by the community right so either way we're going to make some group of people mad tonight it's exactly. just going to happen mm -hmm. but honestly i feel like the parents have gone out of their way to show up for us or show up for the kids in our emails to let us know we want this mandate removed. I feel like the majority, you know, and the majority of the emails that I'm getting are from staff members who should have already been vaccinated. And if you don't want to get vaccinated, it is what it is. You can wear a mask, that's fine. But the majority of the emails I'm getting from parents saying, please remove the mandate. And most of them are pretty nice. The majority of what I hear from the community is please remove the mandate. We have no problem with people sending their kids to school if they want to with masks. So my problem is not just, you know, everything going on, not just thinking about two weeks of school left. My problem is big picture here. So what, we keep it for two weeks. We say, oh, just two more weeks, just two more weeks. And then summer school rolls around. Oh, just two more months, just two more months. And then, you know, 
then it, it becomes the lockdowns that never end almost. You know, I wasn't on the board, but it seems to me like this is a conversation when you talk about local control, you didn't have this conversation way back in September or when the when you mandated masks. Was that a board decision? It was never a board decision. But there was never a conversation. You, you're the board. You could have asked it to be a board discussion. So, I mean, to say now with 15 days to go, where's the local control? Well, we've had no local control until now. I mean, that we never had an opportunity as to a have board, this you conversation. You can always ask to have something put on the agenda. Always. So, and I'm not, I'm not saying either way. I'm just saying, mm -hmm. but it's a conversation that could have happened way back when you talk about local control. But so from the very beginning, everything has been going along regarding all these guidelines, and now we're going to question the guidelines. That seems to be what's happening. Um, I don't know. Either way, we're going to have people that are going to be very yeah, upset. Going to be upset. Either the, the folks were those three buckets. Either way, we're going to have people that are going to be upset. Yeah, and you know, when no you matter look what at the, sure, we got a lot of emails opposing, but there's a lot of parents that didn't respond. I mean, that's not the majority of parents within our school district. So you always hear from the local ones. It'd have been interesting. I mean, you can't do a survey because it's a little late. Um, but a lot of people are going to school and begging, you know, they were talking about bringing, please come back, please come back. Okay, what's your protocol? And they're giving them the protocol. And so I think it's a, it's a whole list of things that parents are bringing their kids back because of all the protocols. They didn't say, oh, it's because you're wiping the desks down, you're washing their hands. I think it's because of all of them. And those that don't want to wear them, they could have way, way, way back that they would, could have gone to high school, but they chose not to. They chose to put their children in the classroom knowing that we had a mask mandate. And we can really beat this thing all night long. <laughs> so I am going to make a motion that, unless you just want to talk about it some more, but I'm just going to move that the board uh, re keep the mask mandate until the end of the school year May 20th? 20. May 20th. For discussion purposes, I will second. Or further discussion purposes. Can I ask one more question before we move? Mm -hmm. um, because uh, to Ms. Dunsmore's point, regarding the parent right um, argument that's been brought up, have you discussed that with our attorney in regard to this decision and the board having legal authority to make this decision and whether or not it violates any legal rights of a parent. Uh, Madam President, Mr. Pritchard, yes, we did consult our attorney who mm -hmm. cited the attorney general's opinion on the matter and decided that it is within the authority of the school district to uh, issue such mandates. Didn't you get an email on that? Yes, we did. And I wholeheartedly agree with that opinion of the AG. Mm -hmm. So that record. would be, can we share that email with those parents? I mean, it wasn't a confidential email, was it? Um, correspondence between the attorney and the client is privileged, but oh, if the, the AG opinion itself is public. But I mean, right. you can tell, you can cite <coughs> an AG opinion. Yes. Sure. Mm -hmm. If you'd like. Since we're on the topic of it, I don't know if this ad is going to amend it to the motion, but um, I, I brought it up earlier too. Are we are we in the position to where we want to amend, amend the uh, the quarantine protocol at all? If again they're they're defining for, um, exposure of unmasked unmasked students is what constitutes an exposure, unmasked within six feet for more than 15 minutes, as far as are we still feeling like as a district we want to continue this full classroom quarantine um, if you are not the person who's actually infected with COVID? 
as long as everyone's wearing masks, is that really a true exposure? Would we want to still quarantine students at this time of the year? Or what are your thoughts on that as far as working that into um, amending the motion at all? Madam President, Ms. Pritchard, the Maricopa County and the state have worked together on the contact tracing and the quarantine protocols. Um, it changes. Um, we have adjusted our protocols based on their protocols with regard to contact tracing and quarantine. Um, so to answer your question, we would continue to follow the template flowchart that is online for Maricopa County in Arizona. And does it matter though? Is it, has, was it ever defined as to whether or not it matters if a, if a student is masked or not? Because in our district we're masked. So does that change anything as far as the Department of Health's recommendation as far as a true exposure? Um, as part of Ms. Pitcher, to my understanding, the mask was never part of the contact tracing or quarantine. It was, as you described, um, within six feet for 15 minutes or longer within a 24 hour period. Um, they have adjusted that, that and they said for 10 days. They've re redone that so that if you get a test at a certain period, a certain day, and then um, if it comes back negative, you can return within seven days. Um, there have been some minor adjustments along the way, but essentially, to my knowledge, I have not seen anything regarding masks other than the recent CDC guidance on outdoors not wearing masks. Thank you. I just kind of feel like, again, at this time of the year, if we're within 15 days, they're wearing masks, and usually they say exposure is without a mask, are we still wanting to quarantine in cl entire classrooms? And we have five students with COVID and Dysart, but I think we're going to either way, whether we're done or not. It sounds, well, it's not, that's Are we keeping the mandate right for now. outside as well, or are we adjusting the mandate to exclude outside activities for the CDC guidelines, since we're mm -hmm. listening to them? Um, that would, based on the motion that's on the table, um, to continue with the mass protocols, um, we would require them outdoors unless the students are engaged in rigorous activity, such as lunch and recess. Well, I didn't mean to get off topic. I just wanted to, if there was going to be a change in how we are making a motion as far as the quarantine, I just want clarification on that. I would say that the motion on the table has an expiration date of May 20th, which would mean that after May 20th, they would, it would not be required. When are we having that? What's our next meeting? Is the implication of May 12th? 12th. So are we? Are you suggesting we um, modify or edit the motion to include an expiration date? Um, one, just that the motion that's already on the table says continue the mass mandate through May 20th. Okay. So that implies that May 21st, there's no longer a mandate. Should we, when's our next meeting after the 20th? I mean, should we, should we specify just for people that are concerned about, you know, is this going to go on or, you know, what like kind of giving them that at least fact-based piece of information like the board will discuss this for summer school it's not going to be something we keep pushing off like um, it, until the board reconvene or the, the board will discuss summer school on X you know date so it's definitely parents can count on the fact and staff can count on the fact that we will be addressing that and well our next board meeting is May 12th well right now it's set to expire on May 20th like the mandate is set to expire the motion was the mandate expires on May 20th. May 20th. There was no motion about revisiting it for summer school. But can't we make it a, when Ms. Densmore says future agenda items, can't we say as a future agenda item, summer school? People need to enroll in summer school now, really. Huh? So really no, people. No, I meant the mass. Mm -hmm. The mass meant summer school as a future agenda item. No, but she's saying parents are deciding whether or not to enroll their students now. Now. So if we're going to make this suffer expire on this month, on the 20th, we need to be clear one way or the other whether or not it's supposed to continue.
for summer school or or if it is I believe it's like football expire. conditioning starts sometime in May yes. or yes. like freshman you know it? football camp okay. uh, uh, Madam President the week the, uh, the school ends on a Thursday mm -hmm. um, the following mm -hmm. week we start with athletic um, camps athletic conditioning right. Then band we, camps. We start with band camp. Mm -hmm. um, there's uh, theater camp plan as well. So there are activities. And because band's can. not a sport, I mean, they don't really get that AIA accommodation. Correct. Oh, they're, but they're I'm telling you, it's terrible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Being outside, marching with your instrument. It's brutal. It is. And yes, to put that mask on top of it is unacceptable, and it, it's really abusive to, to our kids. You cannot play your instrument with a so mask on. So the, um, the motion that says uh, to continue the mandate until the, the requirement protocol, mass protocol, until mm -hmm. May 20th. Um, again, that would imply that after May 20th, it's no longer in effect. Um, I would ask. I will, I, okay, but I, I'm probably not going to vote for that either way. I, I would yeah. ask that at some point, administration be given the, the autonomy to make decisions based on summer activities. Um, it, I understand that it would be um, a good conversation for the board to meet again and then make a board vote about summer school and then again in the fall and, and moving forward. Um, there, there's some wisdom in allowing administration to manage the protocols with continued conversation as we have been doing with the board. Well, remember, we have a work study session on May 5th also. Next Wednesday. Mm -hmm. That's next Wednesday. I think because we didn't get to hear people speak tonight, and then we had so many emails about people's opinions and feelings about masks, that um, rather than just letting it expire, and then people are wondering, well, how do I know whether to sign up for summer school? Are we having masks? Are we not having masks? <coughs> I do feel like there should be some formality and letting the community know, okay, this is what the board's decided on summer school for masks. So then, then they know, okay, do I want to move forward and send my student or do I not? Um, and they can start planning, or administration can start planning. So, um, so I do um, think we should take that. Madam President, yeah. matter of order, mm -hmm. point of order that um, Ms. Grant made the motion. She right. could amend that motion and um, otherwise you would need to carry, it's been motion and seconded, you'd have to move forward with the original motion. If the person who made the motion uh, so chooses to modify that and it becomes seconded again, then that could be a new motion. Well, why don't we keep it real simple and vote on my motion and then make another motion for summer school? You could do that, or you could just you say just amend your motion. in the same sentence. Okay, write it out. <laughs> 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 I will amend my motion to say that the mass mandate stay in place until May 20th, and that for summer school, summer school, because, wait a second, hold on, hold that thought, because they don't have to wear a mask for Rigorous outdoor activities. Rigorous outdoor activity. So rigorous outdoor activity would include band. No. That's not rigorous. We're talking about summer school. And it wouldn't include. I the camps happen after May 20th. Huh? The camps happen after May 20th. Right. But I thought that. Okay, we're only on summer school, right? Okay. Yeah. All right, here's the motion. The amended motion. Motion to continue the district's mass protocol through May 20th, 2021, and. And that for summer school, mass by students or just the optional thereafter that masks are optional for summer school and is this for staff or students or both that's another good question um so the difference between summer school is you're not addressing the gap in between so if you say an optional thereafter then it addresses the camps that happen before summer school starts and after may 20th if you only want to talk about summer school, there's still uncertainty about what the requirements are during that gap time. Right, and, it, and also by making the motion now without hearing from the same parents or community or staff members that would have wanted to speak tonight, 
we're kind of making that decision on optional or not without giving them the opportunity to come and speak their opinion. So I wonder if rather than making a specific motion to summer school, which sounds like according to Dr. Kellis doesn't really capture everything that it needs to because we have these other activities going on, that we just that we just say that the board will maybe we, can we just put it on an agenda prior to the end of the year and talk about I don't this. think it's gonna change. Could I make a simultaneous motion? You'd have to yeah, vote on this yeah. one first, and then okay. we can have a second motion. Thank you. But, um, so take summer school, you're saying take summer school out. It's not because it's not all included. It doesn't capture everything that we need to address. Especially that gap, mm -hmm. that little gap. Summer activities that might incorporate everything. Mm, it's not summer. I don't care, I'm not gonna vote for it. <laughs> True story. <laughs> But I also want to make it clear that we have the option to lift the mandate after this school year. I'm going to vote to oppose it too. I just don't want us to lock ourselves in. We're not talking next school year. We're just trying to get through this school year. I know. I know. But my concern is that it'll just keep going. It'll just keep going. So whatever. There will be a new fear, a new fear, a new fear, a new fear. I mean, just. One after the other, it just snowballs. It's just going to snowball. So, so May 12th is a board meeting. Can't you say we can be in discussion on mask mandate after May 20th? We'll be held on May 12th. Will we be, we get 100 okay. degrees by then outside? I mean, 150. Don't, yeah. I don't know. Outside. I'm sorry, what? They don't have to wear it when they're out. We on have the not made that policy change yet. We haven't made the policy change. I thought, <laughs> wait a second. No, it's when they're engaging in rigorous activity or recess. Recess. Mm -hmm. right. Lunch and recess. Yeah. Before and after school, we don't regulate lunch right. and recess or the times that they're outside unless they're walking between classes. Uh, all, all I'm concerned about is we're going to be in the same situation in two weeks from now that we are today. So I don't, whatever we decide, I feel like we should at least have a good direction of where we're going for summer school rather than just leave everybody hanging in the wind. Because like, that's where you say May 12th then. You, you say that your their mandate is going to be kept in place through May 20th. That district activities after May 20th, or beginning May 21st, will be discussed at the May 12th board meeting. I mean, it's an option. I don't know. That will address the need for like this can't keep going on and on and on. We have to discuss it. That's going to pin us down to a date, um, and then that's when we can really think about. Okay, is it summer school? Is it fall? Is it what? I, know. I feel like we're just going to have a repeat of tonight's scenario. I mean, I'll do whatever the majority goes, whatever, whatever everyone decides, that's fine. But I feel like we're just going to have another repeat of tonight's scenario if we do, if we have another vote for summer activities. I mean, we can do that if that's what everybody wants to do. That's perfectly fine. But I feel like it's just the process is going to keep coming up the same. Well, I don't think so. I think we just, right now, I just want to get us through the school year. We have a, you know, I just want to get us through the school year. That's it. And things change. I mean, we all know that things are, the numbers are lower. Things are changing as we go. So we can discuss summer school, and then who knows, like, by next fall, I mean, everybody is projecting as more people are vaccinated, that masks and everything is going to go away. Yeah, there might be another virus. That's a whole other story that we have no control over. But for now, we just have to get through this darn school year. I know. And um, so, I, I definitely have a don't want to repeat a, regu of a regular motion tonight. on the table. I don't either. Now, does everybody want to amend that motion, or are we going to just vote on masks for the end of the school year? I'm just going to say one more thing. So at this la the end of the last school year, we didn't have a heat. We didn't start in the dead of the heat, you know, in the fall like we normally do because we had that delay. Our kids are not used to this. When these masks get wet, mm -hmm. it blocks airflow. And while our kids are going to sweat, it's going to block that airflow. And I don't care what kind of medical background anyone here has or ha doesn't, it's a fact. And I, I've got three kids in the school district. I also have one with a chronic health condition with a suppressed immune system, a medically, chemically suppressed immune system. 
So I know what I'm talking about too, and I would even rather have him not in a mask so that his lungs can function properly. And I, I just, I, I take this very personally. I'm pretty passionate about it. And I know we all have our hills that we're gonna die on and this is it for me. So that's, just wanted to say my piece. We haven't crossed the hill yet for boundary changes. <laughs> Um, I do agree, Crystal, that I don't want to. I don't want to have a repeat of tonight, too. Especially, you know, they have things. But I was the only reason why I was thinking about having a specified date is just so people aren't feeling like, as long as they are appropriate, they have a, a venue in which to speak to the board directly. I just don't like to take those options away from people. But I get what you're saying too. Yes, it, it would be prolonging it. I'm mean, just trying to find a way to appease people feeling like you know we don't want to just be out there floating someday the bike board might talk about it we'd be actually giving them that so they feel like they were heard and they have that opportunity but um yeah that's I, I guess i just don't want to feel like we're constant we are continually moving the goalposts you know i don't i don't want to say oh we'll deal with that next time and i understand what you're saying you know you want to get parent input you want to give them a chance you want to give them another chance to come back and tell us you know, exactly how they want us to vote, we want to give them that other There's chance. I guess I just feel like we're just saying, oh, we'll deal with it later. We'll deal with it later. And summer's going to get here before we know it. It's like, what? There's literally four or five weeks of, of May, and then, bam, we are in summer activities. And we've only got, we've got the 12th. We've got a meeting on the 12th, and that's the only meeting we have scheduled before all the summer begins. There's one on May 26th. Okay. So <laughs> just saying. okay. So at least we have another meeting. But I, I I don't know. If I was if I was that parent, I wouldn't wanna know I wouldn't wanna be I wouldn't wanna wait till the last minute to know. I don't know. That's me. But like I said, we can we, I feel like if that's what we want to do, if we want to push those back to May 12th, that's fine. I feel like we're just going to keep going around the same hamster wheel. Yeah, I get that. I, I, I don't care either way about that. I just, uh, I, I do think, though, it could be a moving target. I mean, that's why I would want to say the mask mandate would be possibly gone forever um, May 20th, because heaven forbid things get worse and we're in August and things have gone way, way south. Well, I can't say that then, yeah, let's just always have it optional. I mean, there's just new information coming constantly like it always was before, and I just think we always need to make informed, up-to-date decisions on the data that we have. So that's my only hesitation with just saying, okay, as of the 20th, then you can never have to worry about wearing a mask if you don't want to. I mean. When you say the data that we have, are you basing it on the five cases we've got, or are you talking about our, our city, our state, our We're nation? talking about the Department of Health, the CDC, as far as what they're so still the national level? Well, the Department of Health, Arizona Department of Health. Mm -hmm. So at this point, um, I'm a point of order, if you want, if uh, Ms. Grant wants to um, proceed with her original motion or she can modify it to um, say optional after May 20th, that can be done, or she can remove her motion from the table, but um, if she wants to keep it as it is, then it would be appropriate for the Madam President to call for the vote. So, what is the motion? Would you like me to read? I, let's just, I think because there's so much, I still haven't figured out what our, what what to do about summer school. If we're gonna talk about summer school on May 12th, then my motion is gonna stand with, we will leave the mass mandate in place until, in the schools until May 20th. Now that doesn't say that if, if after, let's just, please don't, that there's not another whatever, 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 that we can't come back in August that's not for tonight. In August, to reinstate masks, that's just saying, getting us through the school year, through May 20th. That's the motion. <coughs> so basically, we're making this motion just to, because it's easy. 
No. Mm -hmm. I disagree with that statement mm -hmm. altogether. Okay. This is not easy at all. I've done my research as well. I have been looking into all of this. I feel for every parent um, who is sending their kids to school, but a lot of parents, you know, again, they're looking at the big picture protocol, and I understand what you're saying about your son. I get that. Um, I just think that for right now, we've done it for 200 and what, 150 days? 180. And I'm not saying no, you know, we only have 16 days. I'm, just, I'm glad that you feel comfortable making health care decisions for my child. I'm not making a health care decision for your child. This has, been a, this has been a protocol in the district since last August, September. That wasn't my decision. I wasn't on the board. Well, it sounds like we're just making it to But we keep going keep around in a circle. And We've never had a mandate, though. The, the board collectively never made a mandate. I understand that. Okay, we were following one from the governor. So I we had absolutely no that. control over it. I understand that. Now we do. Yeah. Yeah. So but my statement stands. That, he did say it's up to districts. Thank you. My statement stands. Yeah. We're making... You're making a health care decision for my child. My I'm making a health care decision for all the kids yes. in the district. All yeah, of them. Because like I said, we have to fly at that 30,000 foot. Yeah. I'm and saying that we should give that power to the parents and give them that choice. And again, I'm saying that, well, we can. We just have to vote on it. Let's just vote because we okay, can, call we for can the vote. do this. <coughs> and then we'll discuss summer school and... Madam President, that would be your responsibility. You call for the vote. Well, that's what I just said. I'm okay. calling for the vote. Okay. okay, so I have a motion by Joe Grant to motion to continue the district mask protocol through May 20th, 19, I mean, 20, May 20th, 2021, sorry. Uh, seconded by Tracy to Sawyer Sink Bill. Is that okay? Vote is online. Maybe. Do we need to refresh again? Uh, I don't know. Shouldn't. Nope. Mine didn't pop. Joe, I'm still waiting for yours. Did yours come up? No. I'll okay. just, I'm on. Okay, do you see the votes in front of you? Does anybody? Okay, so no. I, you guys don't see it? I will read them off. Do, uh, Don Densmore, no. Christine Pritchard, yes. Tracy Sawyer Sinkbill, yes. Crystal Schaffen, no. Joe Grant, yes. Mm -hmm. Motion passed. Moving on to agenda item H4. Oh gosh, we still have three. Oh. Good. I'm sorry, Dr. Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Madam President. Members of the board and cabinet, um, this is the second read for section 10. There was a request um, the last time that the uh, policy section referring to sex offender notification be modified. Um, you will note that the language that was added says, uh, uh, the language added says that um, it's not sex offender notification, it's the child abuse reporting. Um, Thank you. That this you responsibility may that. not, or this obligation may not be delegated. Thank you. Are there any questions or discussion about this item? I'll make a motion to approve the revisions to policies within section 10, 10.35 through 10.69 as presented. Second. Seconded by Tracy Sawyer Sinko. I'll call for the vote. Did it come up? No. Not yet. Can I? Oh, there it just did. Okay. okay. Well, I don't mm -hmm. have my little mouse either. Oh. And I have a fly over here. <laughs> okay, we have all board members voting yes. Motion has passed. All right, and item five, Dr. Kellis. 
Uh, Madam President, members of the board, members of cabinet, uh, this is a second reading for sections one through eight. Um, there was some conversation in, I believe, section two and three. Um, some modifications have been made. Um, some recommended language has been added. And if you want to review that and have the discussion, it's available for your vote. Um, I move that the governing board approve the revisions to policies within sections one through eight as presented. Second. All board members voted yes. Motion has passed. Item H6, Dr. Kellis. Thank you, Madam President, members of the board, members of the cabinet. Uh, Mr. Dean will introduce this item. Dr. Dean, excuse me. Dr. Uh, Kellis, I'm struggling to get the meeting to come up on my phone. Thank you. Madam President, members of the government oh. board. Um, this evening, we bring forward uh, to you the calendar recommendation for the next two year block uh, for 2022, 20, 2023, and 2023, 2024. Uh, it's difficult to believe that we're actually take, talking that far out, uh, but we are. Um, the, the calendar formats that are in front of you are, follow the same template that we've used for the last several years. Um, the template has worked successfully for the district. Um, there are a couple of differences with the two calendars that I want to point out. This is the first time that we've been able to balance uh, balance semesters exactly at 90 days apiece. Um, so we're pleased about that. Additionally, we were able to provide um, a full week of fall break and a full week at Thanksgiving as well. Um, and uh, so those two years have that option and we believe that we found a formula now that will allow that to continue to move forward. You will notice that for 2022-2023, um, that uh, graduation date is um, established and that for 2023-2024 is to be determined. Um, we have not yet received a graduation date from the stadium for that year. Um, and so once we receive that, we would bring that back to the governing board. Additionally, um, we are requesting a change to the next school year calendar, 2021-2022, uh, which is a very small change, and that is to um, uh, include the middle schools into the, the day before uh, winter break as uh, final exam days to be uh, on par with the high schools. And so um, we're requesting that change as well as adoption of the other two calendars, which would give us three years of calendar um, on the books um, and allow parents the opportunity to look ahead um, three years at a time. It is our goal to continue to have a process bring forward or bring a calendar every year to continue to have three years on the books at a time which will help parents um, as they look ahead moving forward. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. I just have one question. Well, yeah. Um, on the next, the, tw I can't believe it, the mm -hmm. 22, 23, um, is the graduation date, now we're into May, today, this year it's May 19th, now it's May 23rd. Is that because of the whole week at Thanksgiving? Um, Madam President, Ms. Grant, uh, our graduation date is somewhat dictated to us by the um, venue that we utilize. Um, and oh. the, the venue goes in an order uh, to allow schools to choose based upon who's used their facilities the longest. Um, out of the six school districts that utilize the stadium, we're currently fourth in that list. So by the time they get to us, there's limited days, and we do the best that we can to select a date within our calendar range. So then you pick that day and work backwards? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, my question to you, Dr. Dean, is how did you actually come up with doing the 90 and the 90? Because that's very difficult. What formula did you use? Um, well, in working through my dissertation, apparently I got a little wiser in math. <laughs> uh, and I'm, kid, I'm kidding with that, of course, but we finally, uh, you know, we finally operated from a perspective that that was a priority to us. And even, ironically, even an 89-91 day split is not, um, 
as effective for our high schools um, as 9090, and, and our teachers really want to see that 9090 piece. Um, so we just were able to finally calculate an opportunity to allow us to get to that point, and then again, we discovered um, a, a way that we could uh, schedule the calendar to give those, both of those weeks of break in, in the fall, which both our teachers and administrators are very thankful for. Mm -hmm. Currently, with the two days of Thanksgiving, we have a great amount of absence um, in those two days, and so mm -hmm. that's a positive. Wow. Congrats on finding that formula, because you know, it's, it's difficult. To work, um, mm -hmm. you know, as we move forward. Awesome. I'll make a motion to approve revisions to pop. Um, oh my gosh. <laughs> Careful the, flies, again. I know. careful the flies flying around. Oh, my mouse just keeps doing weird things. Sorry. Do you want me to do it? Yes, Okay. Please. I move that the <laughs> governing board approve the adoption of the school calendars for the 2022, 2023, and the 2023 and 2024 school <laughs> years as presented and revision to the 21, excuse me, 2021-2022. School year. Second. <laughs> that was a lot. Oh, a lot of twenty. I'm so glad you did that. So, are we seconded by Don or Joe? Don. Okay, the vote passed unanim unanimously. Moving to item I-1, request for future agenda items. I have one request, and my request is, I had a, uh, kind of touched base with Dr. Kellis on this, um, if we could get the traffic light um, update with the City of Surprise. Um, the crosswalk, like especially the update with uh, West Point, and um, I had also um, mentioned to him in regards to students that, um, and it was a concern with some people, um, crossing over uh, Reams Road at Troya. Um, uh, if there is some type of movement with that. Okay, Madam President, Mr. would you like that as an agenda item or as an update on the weekly update? Or um, I think it's, it's information that all of us need to okay. know. So I would say um, as an information item. Can I fill it out and send it to you? Okay. Um, are we going to put that? Uh, Summer school on May 12th? Okay. I think we got that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Again, as just for clarification, so everybody's on the same page that um, given tonight's action, that the mandate goes into effect until May 20th, and then it is no longer in effect. So you're saying that, that no, it's not going to be an agenda item? Well, I'm not saying it is or isn't. That's just for clarification. Okay. Someone's going to submit something. Sure. Is there sure. Anyone mm -hmm. Motion to, to adjourn the meeting? Second. Second. <laughs> <laughs> At least it's not 11 o'clock. I have a motion by Don Densmore, second by Chrissy, Chrissy Pritchard. Madam President, if the board could stay just a second after, we can give you instructions to exit. The board voting unanimously. 